kookaburu. You hear a lot about it. Uh, is there anything to it? Is it real? Uh, and if it's not, is there anything connected to it that's real? Uh, so you'll frequently hear the phrase that you can, can judge a tree by its fruit. I would reverse that and say you can frequently judge a fruit by its tree. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you start looking into the origins of planet Nibiru, you find two in individuals, two extremely interesting individuals. Uh, one's name is Nancy Leader, and the other's name is Zacharias Dab Gummit Stanchion. Ah, shucks. I think it's Stanchion, or Stanchion, or Stanchion. It's Zacharias Stanchion. He go, was born in Azerbaijan, grew up in uh, modern day Israel, uh, moved to America. Really interesting guy. Uh, but but both of these guys, the, both of these people are a little uh, a little uh, weird. Uh, if you're not familiar with Nibiru, and I doubt that you aren't, uh, Nibiru is this alleged celestial body. Uh, it could be a. Some people say it's a planet. Some people say it's a dwarf star. Uh, some people say it's some form of comet. Uh, the, what, what all the theories have in common is that it's on this very, very large elliptical orbit where it only comes past the sun. Most people say every 3,600 years. Some people say every 250,000 years it changes. Uh, the point is it brings with it cataclysm. Cataclysms and, and uh, catastrophes and catch up. Something else that starts with cat. It brings terrible things. Uh, and, and allegedly it's coming again. Uh, you, we've heard about it a lot with connection to the blood moons. Uh, they, they talked about a lot in connection with the Mayan calendar in 2012. What else was it? Uh, you hear about Nibiru a lot. So, so where it, it kind of first came into the public consciousness was with this guy, uh, Zacharias Stanchion. That gum, I can't believe it. I just double checked this before I walked out here too, and I forgot already. Uh, and he, he, neat, neat guy. He was a trained economist, was a journalist for a while, uh, was an executive of the shadow. He just did a bunch of different stuff. But at some point, he decided to, to teach himself ancient Sumerian, uh, and he he read all these ancient Sumerian scripts, and he came up with this idea that there's this planet Nibiru or possibly Marduk uh, that comes by every so often, and. Uh, and from this planet, a bunch of aliens came from the planet Nibiru to Earth to mine gold to fix their atmosphere because their planet was dying. Uh, and they decided that they needed a, a hybrid worker. And so they took alien DNA and combined it with uh, some kind of simian Earth, you know, great ape DNA and came up with humans. Uh, and so that we are the product of this alien race. And, uh, and uh, the, the Nibiruese or whatever you call them, they left and they'll come back later. But that's where humans come from, and that's where you know, our culture and everything comes from. Aliens seeded it with uh, genetic engineering hundreds of thousands of years ago. Uh, it's an interesting theory. It's total shit. <laughs> I mean, it's garbage. Uh, and when you read it, when you read what this guy actually said, you, it's total garbage. I mean, it, it doesn't even make a little bit of sense. Uh, later on, uh, this crazy lady, and I've kind of already shown my bias here, this crazy lady named Nancy Leader comes out in 1995 and says that when she's a girl, when she was a girl, she was contacted by uh, gray aliens called Zetas. And the Zetas implanted a device in her brain that allowed them to communicate with her. And uh, they told her that the Hale-Bot comet was false and that it was actually a, a, uh, uh, a uh, facade to hide the approach of Planet X, which was going to kill us all. Uh, Later on, like that, see, that was 95, now 96, she connected this with planet Nibiru. Okay, so this is the origins of planet Nibiru kind of in the modern consciousness. Uh, the planet Nibiru has failed to appear a number of times. I mean, it is, it is worse at keeping appointments than I am. Uh, it, it didn't appear for uh, any of uh, Nancy Leader's predictions. Uh, we all remember the blood moon thing here recently where it didn't show up. Uh, there's been a bunch of others, 2016, 2017, 2012. Nibiru is supposed to be here a lot, and it's never shown up. Uh, so, so it's got to be so bad that when I hear someone with an idea or a theory, and it features planet Nibiru anywhere inside there, I instantly shut it down. I mean, it's just my brain just wall goes up, and I can't even hear them anymore. That being said, there is some truth behind us as believers. Now, if you're a believer, if you're not a believer, then just tune this out. You know, many of the things that are attributed to come with planet Nibiru are things that we as believers know is coming. You know, uh, 
there, there's a, there's some kind of something called wormwood that's coming. Uh, you know, a third of the earth's going to be wiped out. A third of the oceans are going to, you know, all that stuff we read about in Revelations, uh, all that stuff's coming. You know, and, and all this stuff is that's frequently attached to Nibiru is, is things that are part of our faith and that we believe in. Uh, so it kind of, it kind of drives me crazy sometimes when, when facts about our faith, these facts, you know, faith facts, th things that we believe, uh, uh, are connected to this foolishness that comes from, from non-believers, people who don't have any use for the Bible. You know, st Stanchion, come on, it's going to drive me nuts. Zachariah, whatever his last name was, uh, I'm not sure what he believed in, but it wasn't God, you know, and he believed all the, the biblical texts that we, the, we as believers we're all based on Sumerian text. So he completely rejects the whole foundation of our faith. Uh, leader, I doubt, <laughs> that woman was just nuts. Uh, I mean, she's just she's just a crackpot. You know, I mean, she was telling people to euthanize their pets ahead of this thing coming at one point. I don't know if anyone did it or not, but that's how crazy she is, you know. Uh, kill, your, kill your dogs. The aliens talking to me through the device in my head told me that it's going to be bad for them. Uh, and, and then we take these people's foolishness and, and connect it to parts of our faith, and what we end up doing is is making our faith look bad in front of people who don't believe it. You know, they, oh, those, those crazy believers. You know, look, yeah, Planet Nibiru is going to come and, and destroy everything, and and we connect the revelation to this foolishness from these crackpots. Uh, that being said, I understand where it comes from and why. And there was somewhere that I, I'm forgetting something I wanted to say. That guy, I hate it when I do this. I understand why, why we do it, you know, because we're all we're all looking for that, especially in in our community and the you know the preppers and and whatnot and the woke folk, we're 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 looking for that big event and sometimes hoping for it as an escape route, uh, but but there's nothing to planet. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Here's the thing with Planet Nibiru, guys. For it for it to be a thing at all that it's claimed to be, it has to be huge. It has to be massive. It's really big. Uh, that means we could see it for a long, long, long time coming. And I know, I know the, the, the theory is that oh, NASA's hiding it. Here's the problem. You'd be able to see it almost with the naked eye. You know, like you can see Mars and Venus, uh, and I think you can see Jupiter. There's a couple of planets you can see with the naked eye. Uh, even with just a regular commercial telescope that many of, you know, you know, a couple thousand dollar telescope, you could see this thing. I know they say it's coming up from the South Pole and you can't see it. That's not true. You can see it. Uh, it, it can't sneak up on us. Here's the other thing. Uh, the ancient peoples were really good at astronomy. I mean, really good at astronomy. This was like the first science. And they recorded all these astrological events and all this stuff. And they don't record it on a 3,600-year cycle. Now, if it, you know, if it was on that 250,000-year cycle or whatever, uh, sure, fine, whatever. Maybe, maybe that, one, that one element wouldn't apply. All the rest would. But, but there's no really, there's no uh, uh, record of this thing uh, in, in the, the astrological records. And, you know, all these people kept real good track of the stars and the seasons and, and all that stuff in astronomy and astrology. Uh, and it's not there. Uh, Zachariah Stanchion, yeah, come on, that's going to drive me nuts. Uh, he, he said the last time it came through was 556. AD, which actually isn't a bad date. Uh, 557, I think, was the year when a volcano went off, and it, you know, it blacked out the sun for like a year and a half. There was literally they were in twilight for a year and a half. Terrible time. Uh, I've heard it described as the worst year to be alive. Uh, so yeah, you know, I mean, you can you can go. Uh, there's other people who 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 connect it to the flood and and other things like that. But it's it's just not. It ain't it ain't so, folks. Now. Like I said, the things that people attribute to Nibiru uh, are true. Those are coming at some point. We know they are. It's a, it's a point of our faith. But, but Nibiru, as it's described to us as a celestial body in an elliptical orbit around our sun that, that's on a very long orbit passing through the solar system, ain't, ain't so. At least there's no evidence to it that I can see whatsoever. Uh, and I know I'm going to anger some folks because there's some folks who, who take it pretty seriously. I would, I would submit to you that if, if you're angry at me, I would submit to you that, that you have conflated Nibiru 
with some of these deeper beliefs, these different things that we know are going to happen. But those things don't need Nibiru. Uh, Nibiru is not important to, to those parts of our faith. Uh, Nibiru is something of a distraction, I think. Uh, and, and like I said, when I hear Nibiru, my, uh, my alarm bells go off and my, uh, my walls go up. Anyway, that's my opinion, man. We appreciate you. Thank you.